Okay, good evening all. This is the uh, regularly scheduled meeting of the Town of East Bridgewater Planning Board. It's uh, Monday evening, April 4th, 2022. Uh, it's exactly 7 p.m. according to my uh, tablet in front of me here. Currently present for the board, uh, regular members uh, Rob Ken, John Lawler, Christine Hanley, Edward O'Leary, myself, Roy Gardner. Also present, associate member Kevin Riley. Also present, representing the Planning Building Department, uh, uh, Dot Simpson and Ellen McKenzie. Uh, just for everyone's uh, information, uh, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, if anyone wishes to record the meeting on their own, uh, please just let us know. It is allowed under uh, Massachusetts state law, but state law does require that you notify the chair that you do intend to record the meeting. Uh, first item of business on tonight's agenda is we have minutes of March 21st, 2022. to um, forego reading of the minutes of March 21, 2022, and to approve the draft as presented. That's a motion, Riley. Do we have a second? Second. That's a motion, Riley, with a second, Hanley. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor of the motion to uh, accept the minutes uh, with the waiting, uh, reading of the minutes waived, uh, say aye. 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 All those opposed? We'll show that six in favor is none opposed. Uh, just note for the record, at, uh, we'll call it uh, 7.02 p.m. Uh, regular member Sherry Bates is also present. Next item on our agenda for this evening is uh, Elmwood Court and West Street. Uh, the selectmen have uh, voted to uh, put Elmwood Court on the agenda for acceptance for upcoming annual town meeting. They have forwarded to us their uh, documents, including the order of taking. We need to formally uh, vote to make a recommendation at annual town meeting. Uh, we could do that here tonight, or we could propose that uh, we put that on our agenda for our, for our next meeting. Uh, what's what's the what's the date for annual town meeting this year? It's the week after May fourth. Second, what, what's it? Second is the first okay. Monday. Okay. And second is the Monday, so and the, then ninth. the next one after that is the ninth. ninth. Yep, ninth. That's the annual town meeting. All right, so we do have one more regularly scheduled meeting. Is it this month we don't have a second meeting, or is it next month? It's this month, right? So we do have one more regularly scheduled meeting, which would be May 2nd, which is prior to annual town meeting. So we could either vote tonight to uh, make a positive recommend, or make any recommendation, I should say, I guess, to to, uh, to accept the roadway as a as a public way to to forward that uh, and report to town meeting on that, or we could defer that the official recommendation to uh, uh, meeting of May second. If anyone has any questions or, or wishes to further review the status of that, I, I can simply say that we have received all of the documentation required. Selectmen have confirmed that with town council that we have all the, the documents necessary for the for the related takings. We do have the as-built plan in hand. The as-built plan has been reviewed and, and appears to meet all of our requirements at this point in time. So I guess 
depending on the on the, the pleasure of the board, we could uh, we could vote tonight to make that recommendation to accept the uh, the roadway to annual town meeting, or we could defer so everyone could could further review if if so needed uh, to our first meeting in May. So, what's your pleasure? Motion to accept. Okay, so 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 we we've got a we've got a motion O'Leary in a, in a in a second Hanley uh, to make an affirmative recommendation at town meeting that we accept the roadway as a public way. I'll modify that slightly because we're actually making a recommendation that right. Uh, we concur that we should be accepting the uh, the roadway. Any any discussion on the motion? No. Uh, I believe the gentleman sitting in front of us is, is the is, is the developer applicant. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. But uh, no questions other than the fact that uh, I, I really wanted to thank Dorothy here, who's really helped us quite a bit. Uh, we've. The neighbors there have been waiting for well over a year to get this done. I was just down there. It looks really beautiful. Uh, they've done a nice job actually doing the cul-de-sac themselves. We have a little homeowners association. All the houses are built. Uh, I think it's a great addition to your to your town. Uh, and I know they're really looking forward to having the town take that over. So I would thank you very much. And just for the record, can we have your name, please? Elliot Schneider. Thank you, Elliot. Yes. Uh, I do agree. It, it's a it's a well done subdivision. Everything seems to be working very well. The the drainage system seems to work very well. Uh, given all of that, then and the motion on the table to uh, uh, to make an affirmative recommendation at uh, annual town meeting that the uh, town vote to accept the roadway. Uh, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed. Uh, we'll show that as unanimous vote. Uh, of all seven uh, members present and voting. Thank you. Uh, I just have a quick question, Mr. Gardner. I Certainly. know we, have, uh, we haven't asked for any of our bond reduction. Do we have to come to another meeting for that, or will the bond be returned? How do we proceed? Uh, what, I would, what I would simply suggest is that you send us a letter okay. confirming that we voted to recommend acceptance at annual town meeting. Okay. Uh, once we've received that, that letter, okay. uh, we can officially notify the uh, whichever of the three departments, the treasurer, the collector, or the whoever it is it is downstairs to release the remaining bond. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, board. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Next item on the agenda is a discussion on Sully's Lane. supposed to actually call him <coughs> so while we're attempting to, to access uh, the developer of Sully's Sully's lane which is down off of uh, it's off of West Pond is it West Pond it's West Pond Street right I always get confused because when I go down to Pond Street, I don't view that as actually being West Pond, but that's the name <laughs> on the street, so I would call that in my somewhat maybe unbalanced view of geography to be South Pond Street, but it is called West Pond Street. Uh, so, so there's somehow originally there got to be some confusion on, on, on Sully's Lane, uh, which is a small subdivision off West Pond Street. Sully's Lane basically... Uh, I guess depending on how you want to look at it, it has three houses on it. Although two of those houses have almost all of their legal frontage on West Pond Street. Sully's Lane effectively is, is a, legally it's not a one lot subdivision, but it provides the pr uh, primary frontage for a single lot, which is to the rear of Sully's Lane. To the right hand side of Sully's Lane, the way it was originally designed, the, the road slopes off to the right. Uh, there's an in-ground infiltration system all along the, what would be the north side, or I guess the east side, depending on where your north and east are, uh, on Sully Lane. 
the subdivision approval letter required that there be a berm placed that was added as part of the approval, a berm on, the, on that side of the road, along with a sidewalk, which would uh, interfere with the fact that there's no in-ground drainage in, in Sully's Lane. It was designed to be run off to the outside with an infiltration, infiltration area. So a as we get to the point where we're trying to finish up, it was noted that there's no berm on that side of the road. Uh, I went down and looked at it again today, and it, was, it wasn't designed originally to have a berm there. So uh, my recommendation would be that, that, that based on the request from the applicant, and I'm not sure if he's actually is there, because yeah. I can see him up there. I Joe, hear him here. Joe, can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. So my recommendation to the board would be that we go ahead based on the uh, on the developer's request to is to waive the sidewalk and the berm because that would defeat the intent of the in entire drainage system, which was, it's one of those few in town where we're using what I would refer to as the uh, low impact development uh, as adding a berm and, and putting a, a sidewalk on that side of the road would, uh, would probably defeat the in entire functionality of the uh, the infiltration that was built on that side of the road since the sidewalk would basically be on top of it and the berm would run the water to the rear uh, which it wasn't intended to do in the original design so so, so given that I'll uh, if you think you need to add anything to that Joe or if uh, uh, no I think that's fine it's a one lot subdivision and we built the roadway according to the plan because we were draining it over to the right um, putting berm on would end up making a uh, pool on the, uh, the the water won't drain anywhere. So well, it would end up draining to the bottom of the subdivision where there's no design drainage built in because it was originally designed to drain off to the right side of the road. If if I if I remember correctly and looked at the plans correctly and looked at the site this yeah. morning correctly, right? So is there anyone on the board that have a, have a has a question on that? So given that, I, I think we could entertain a motion to, to waive construction of the berm on the right-hand side of the road as well as the sidewalk. That makes the most sense, right? I mean, you, you can't do anything about it now, is that correct? Yeah, the, the, the drainage would need to change if we put a berm there, right? So. Yeah, so. So is that is that your motion then, John? That would be, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a motion, Lala. Do we have a second to that motion? Translate it for me. <laughs> yeah, I'll second it. Okay. So we have a we have a motion, Lala. <coughs> Excuse me. Second, O'Leary. To grant the requested waiver of uh, elimination of the the Cape Cod berm and the sidewalk on the right hand side of the road. Further discussion on the. Uh, Further discussion on the motion? Are you, any intention to accept this as a town road in the future? Or? Uh, it, it has not been intended to accept it as a town road. To, to as, as, as Mr. Cooley just noted and as we discussed during the original uh, subdivision hearing, it, it effectively is a one-lot subdivision. Acknowledging that the, the fire chief did request that the design of the houses on that site be modified slightly to instead of accessing the, the garages from the original West Pond Street because of its physical, physical location in West Pond, it, it would be a better design to access the, the two-car garages from the, from the actual new roadway. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, my expectation is it would remain a, a private roadway as, as a, and, and treat it as if it's a one-lot subdivision since it basically serves a single house. <coughs> Given, given that discussion, any further questions? Anyone here in the in the room have any questions? Okay, then on the motion to uh, to proceed with a uh, a waiver of the Cape Cod berm and and the uh, the sidewalk for Sully's Lane. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All those opposed. No vote. I'm going to show that as six in favor, none opposed, with Associate Member Kevin Riley abstaining. 
uh, since that's an action under the subdivision control law. Mm -hmm. so we'll record that as six, in, again, six in favor, none opposed, unanimous vote of all members present and voting. Uh, thank you all for that. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and board members. Have a great night. Okay, next item on our agenda tonight is uh, we have a Form A plan for 49 Keith Place. Excuse me, Roy, that's a typo. It's 46. 46 Keith 46. Place. All right, thank you, Doc. So we should have that that uh, that plan in our in our notebooks that are on the table here. So as noted on the plan, it, it says the intent of this plan is to divide assessor's map 62 lot 80 into two new lots. Shown here on is, is lot A and lot B. This is an R3 zone with a minimum lot size of 15,000 square feet. Minimum frontage is 100 feet. Building square is 75 feet since it's 75% a square, 75% of the uh, frontage, which would be 75 feet on each side. Current building would end up on what is shown on the plan as lot A. Lot A would have a frontage of 130.83 feet. Lot B would have a frontage of 100.67 feet. Lot A would be just short of an acre. Uh, three quarters of that's upland. Lot B would be just under 32,000 square feet. Where 12,000 square feet is contiguous uplands. I do, not, I do note on the plan that although the wetlands line is drawn in from what I believe to be the zoning map, but there is a note on the plan that the extent of the wetlands has not been determined. Uh, it's not clear from the way the plan is drawn and the way the notes are whether or not the, uh, the wetlands line shown here has actually been flagged and, and accepted by the Conservation Commission as, as the, uh, the legally binding wetlands line.
There was also a note in the plan that says wetland delineation was performed by five wetlands on April 14th, 2021. So that would have been uh, early spring, about a year ago. There was also a note on the uh, lot B identification that it has 11,795 square feet of contiguous uplands. Since the minimum lot size required is 15,000 square feet, the minimum contiguous uplands would be 7,500 square feet. It has uh, roughly 50% more than that. So, so given that, I believe we can entertain a motion to uh, endorse the plan as a as a Form A plan, uh, which, in the words of the subdivision control law, means that uh, approval under subdivision control is not required. So I'll leave that out to the members of the board. Any questions? Uh, to put a motion on the table to. Uh, Authorize endorsement of the plan. Have any questions? So I'll make a motion that we endorse the plan for uh, uh, 46 Keith Place, referencing Assessor's Map 62, Lot 80, prepared for Michelle O'Hearn. We have a second to that. Second. So that's a motion, God, and a second, Lawler. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed? No vote. So we'll show that as a uh, vote of six in favor, none opposed, with uh, with member Riley abstaining, since again this is a uh, this is an action taken under uh, subdivision control. Thank you all for that. Uh, next item on the agenda is a site plan review for 47 West Union Street. picture of that up on the screen right now uh, is the applicant present that's uh, could, could you come up to the front if you would please so this is this is an existing parcel of land that's on West Union Street uh, to the rear of West Union Street or where that dimension 111.93 feet is is, is the old railroad right away, railroad easement, whatever we want to call that. Uh, uh, I know I've seen it somewhere, but I don't see it up in that plan. The, the, the actual square footage of that parcel is, is, is only in the range of 20,000 square 30, feet. 3,700. 3,700. Yes. So uh, it is a small parcel it's, of land. It's a, it's a small parcel, yes. Uh, it's been used for many, many years uh, by, I believe it's the owner of the land who had a, a small building on that who runs an electrician's business? Yes, that's me. That's you? Yep. Okay, I'm sorry. Could I ha have um, your names, please, for the record? Yes, Mark Swedko. Marcelino Montrondi. Okay, thank you. You So Mr. Swedko has, has, has used that as his, as his uh, legal address for a long time for his electrical business. Uh, there's an application pending with the billing inspector uh, to use that property as a uh, to sell used cars. Uh, 
The billing inspector has indicated to us that he's satisfied that provided all of the items shown on that plan are, are maintained. Uh, we should be okay. I, I believe the, the way the billing inspector came up with the, his view of that, we could fit four cars on that space for sale at any given time. Yeah. Uh, it is within the downtown business district, so it has no requirement for customer parking directly on the site, as in that area, uh, on-street parking is allowed. So the billing inspector has indicated that, that he has no issues with that. The, the office, if you will, for the purposes of the legal address of the license that would be issued by the Board of Selectmen would be the, uh, the small steel building that's existing in the site that's uh, based on that plan 25 feet by 14 feet. So, so given that, I'll leave it up to the board to ask any questions. Uh, so from discussions with a building inspector, the, the building inspector recognizes that a, a, a used car business effectively is, is a specialty business and then it requires additional licensing over and above what the planning board can allow under under the retail use category, but his view is that, that his limitations and, and therefore his recommendation to us is based on the fact that that is a, a retail business district under the zoning bylaw. It's up to the selectmen to determine, to determine whether or not they will issue a license and what conditions they will put on that license over and above what's shown in the site plan. I would note for the record that based on the site plan that's been submitted to us, the maximum number of cars allowed at that site for sale at any given point in time will be four. Uh, we will pass that information on to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, and again, that's based on the discussions with the, the, uh, the building inspector or building commissioner, I guess I should say more correctly, who's also our zoning enforcement officer and advises on, on the zoning requirements in that area. This is a, a site plan, so technically speaking, it doesn't, it doesn't fall directly within either a special permit or a subdivision control. So uh, given our past legal advice, I, I would offer that, uh, that member, Associate Member Kevin Riley is free to both discuss and record a vote on this, uh, on this site plan approval. Further discussion, questions, motion to approve the site plan wherever we are, I'll, I'll leave it up to the board at this point. I would um, do one of two things. I'd either ask the applicant to agree to, to continue this or to withdraw it, uh, or otherwise I'd be prepared to make a motion to deny it. I don't believe it satisfies in any respect the requirements of Section 13 of our bylaw. It's supposed to have an engineered plan. Um, supposed to have sufficient off-street parking, although I respect the comment that you just made. Um, there's no indication on this plan as to any modification that would be made relative to the surface of the site, so whether it would be paved, graveled, anything to prevent um, oil, gas from leaking into the soil from vehicles that are stored there. There's nothing to indicate what would be done to the building, which um, is in need of something, um, I think. And having looked at it, I mean, you're basically wedging two cars on the right-hand side of that building between a fire hydrant and a telephone pole uh, up against a fence that separates that lot from the butter's lot. So um, if the applicant wants to come back with something a little more definitive, I would certainly maybe entertain it, but... I don't think in its present form it's approvable. Anyone else on the board have any questions or comments? Same. All right, so given that and the fact that we've got at least three, uh, three members sitting here on the board of, in, in concurrence then, uh, so, uh, can I ask a question? 
Certainly. So I've dr driven around the, the town looking at diff different car dealerships. Uh, my property goes right up to the well, sidewalk. So from the street from the street to the to my property line is ten feet. Why am I required to do another ten foot buffer when everywhere I look most of the car dealerships are right on the property line. I mean, if it's, like, it's a small lot, I understand that. I don't understand why I need 10 foot buffer from my property line back to where the first car, let's say, would be set. I mean, that's... Uh, that question would actually have to be answered by the zoning enforcement office, who's the building commissioner. Okay. I know we have in the past required multiple car dealerships, including the the used car dealership up, up at the intersection of uh, Laurel Street and Route 106 to paint a white line 10 feet back off the roadway and to make sure cars are not put into that area. What, 10 feet off the roadway? I'm, I'm, this, is, this is putting me 20 feet off the roadway. Well, in his case, it's 10 feet off the roadway. The roadway layouts are areas to where that is. He, right. he provided a... That's one of the problems we have here. We don't have an actual engineered plan, so we don't really know where the roadway line is. Pavement and, and roadway are not the same thing. Yep. The roadway layout is typically 40 feet wide. Pavement in most areas in town is between 20 feet and 25 feet. So there's a 15-foot area that, that's not really defined very well anywhere that's, that can only be identified with a, with a surveyor's work. So right. I do agree with, with uh, the comments made that the site plan approval does require an engineered plan. Okay. Showing where the exact dimensions are and where the boundaries are. Well, I, I took this off, right off the engineering plan for, for my septic system, which is an engineered plan. So this, this is the same exact as the engineering plan I got for the septic so, system. So my suggestion, based on the comments made and the concurrence with the members of the board, is to go back to whatever engineer drew that septic plan and ask them to, to effectively put the same thing that's on that sketch plan onto, the, onto a new plan using the information he had gathered when he did the septic plan. So what's going to change? Nothing other than an engineer's stamp. Uh, which is kind of important in the state of Massachusetts for land use. Uh, I don't disagree with, with Member Riley's comments on the fact that without an engineered plan, we're relying what amounts to a pencil sketch of, yeah. of where the boundaries are. So I, I guess we have two options. We could continue this uh, with a waiver of... of, of but if the building inspector, okay, was good with this, why well, I don't understand why. Well, the building inspector doesn't vote on the site plan. This board does. Right. This this board is required to receive an engineered plan. So so. Member Riley and at least two other members of the board's comment were correct that without an engineered plan, we shouldn't shouldn't be actually voting on a site plan approval. Okay. So we have two options that we continue the. The date timeline until such time as receiving it, we receive an engineered plan, or as as Member Riley offered, he would make a motion to uh, disapprove the plan in its current format. It's up to you which one of those options you want to accept. So, so why didn't I need an engineering plan to run my electrical business out of it? I mean, I parked on the property. I mean, I worked out of it. That was okay. But I can't answer that question. It's been there as long as I can remember. So, and I've been here a very long time, right. going on 40 I years. So, I can't answer that question. Yeah. Under the current bylaw, an engineered plan is required to to show that as well as an actual. Uh, as again, as Member Riley referenced, we should see what improvements are intended to be made there. Yeah. As the picture clearly showed, almost all of that is simply grass. Right. Parking used car on a grass. Well, it would yeah, would be grass. I mean. It, most likely gravel or, or a certain por portion of it paved where the cars would be sitting on it. We'd, we'd need to know what that is. Right. Okay. So again, I'll leave the option up to you. Either either we can vote to deny the plan at this point, you'd have to come back and start again. Right. Uh, we, can, we can defer the vote until our next meeting, at which time we could potentially have an engineered plan available. Okay. So we'll just defer it and I'll work on the new engineering, I guess. All right, so I'll take, I'll take Member Riley's comment to be a motion to accept a uh, defer to the next meeting before taking action on this until we receive an engineered plan, if that's okay, uh, I'll move, Kevin. I'll move to uh, continue with 2-7. Seven, 
I believe the next meeting 7 is 7.05 p.m. on. Oh, excuse me. We, we have like three public hearings next month, so it's not going to be until sometime yet. To so we'll, we'll defer to May 2nd. Time out. Time out. We'll, time out. Time out. Okay. Okay. we'll defer to I'm, May 2nd. At, I was, I was going to make a motion to May 16th at 7.15. May 16th at 7.15. Okay. Do we have a second to that motion? Uh, second. We have a, a motion in a... In a uh, We'll, we'll call that a motion, uh, Riley second O'Leary, to defer until uh, 7.15 p.m. on May 16th, we said? Yes. May 16th. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed. All right, thank you all. Thank you. A couple of things to quickly go over here. Uh, not in the agenda, but things that have been happening very quickly and, and very recently. Uh, we, we had a court session on Monday <coughs> regarding a case that has started and most of it has gone on before anyone other than me sitting at this table has been involved with the planning board. Thank God. Uh, <laughs> I don't get court time anymore. <laughs> so one of the things that came as a result of that meeting is that uh, the judge who's hearing the case had asked that we provide the judge with a history of the zoning bylaw dimensional requirements in the R1 district, which, which for the record started back in 56 under modern zoning when we adopted the modern zoning bylaw. Is a district called RA1, then in 67 became a district called RA, and in 1989 became a district called R1. Uh, so since, since I'm one of the primary people involved in the court case and my name is on the case, I spent a good portion of two days in the town clerk's office going over some 20-some-odd zoning bylaws in their printed and updated format from the town clerk's records, uh, extracting from each of those the tables of dimensional requirements, and then looking at each one of those tables and eliminating all those tables where the dimensions in the R1 district was redundant. And we came up with a, a total of, since, since 1956, there's been four di dimensional or name changes in, the, in that zoning district. That table was put together along with photocopies of the actual pages from those uh, those zoning bylaws. Uh, interesting, just for the record, as a kind of an aside, that our original zoning bylaw from 1956 was a single page. <laughs> uh, it was printed on on a document that I would say is roughly 36 by 24, with the map on one side and the fine print zoning bylaw on the reverse side. And it was folded up into a document that could be mailed if it was four by six. Uh, wow. That's in the uh, town clerk's office in the records as our, as our first uh, zoning bylaw. Suffice to say that the town clerk today issued a two copy assessed uh, stamp on those documents that I had pulled together, including the copies of those tables, and that's going to be forwarded to, to our legal representative who's going to forward it to the court probably within the next day or two. Uh, second item of interest is, is we're in the process, uh, and I think we've discussed this in general previously, but uh, we are going to make some changes to the, the, the current stormwater management bylaw, which is a local bylaw within the town. Uh, there has been several drafted copies go back and forth. A finished version of that is very close. I, th I think there's a couple of minor changes that we need to be made in one of the paragraphs. And I wanted to discuss this briefly with the board. Th there's a paragraph uh, within that. Suffice to say, without going through the 20-some-odd pages of the stormwater management uh, bylaw, there's a section 6D that descri describes public hearing. I, I think... The bylaw still needs some additional language cleaned up so that 
it's clear that it's not intended that this be a separate public hearing independent of the subdivision control hearing and or the special permit hearing that it, it have its same legal notice and, and be uh, basically done concurrently as an integral part of those two hearings uh, my expectation would be it should also be the same for uh, the Conservation Commission under the Wetlands Protection Act so it's 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 the problem I see in the current quote final version is that there's some times and days listed there which don't reconcile directly with the various times and days of the of the three potential uh, processes that would be being used here either either Conservation Commission under the Wetlands Protection Act subdivision control under under the Planning Board and or special permits under section 9 of the the Massachusetts general laws for the, the zoning act so I, I think that paragraph needs to be updated better than it's currently updated because it it still has specific times that the current change was was simply that they changed the word the stormwater authority authority <coughs> shall hold a public hearing and then it gave timelines it said now says may hold a public hearing it's still not clear enough in my opinion in the bylaw that they shall be done as an integral part of of the underlying hearings if there are hearings so, so my intent was that to take this and, and send it around to the board. Uh, this does need to be ready for annual town meeting, or is planned to be ready for annual town meeting, uh, and see what. So, so one of the explanations I've received is is that we'll take care of the specific details and the rules and regulations. Uh, I see a bit of a problem with that in that how it's handled and under what laws and, and the specifics of the hearing in my opinion should actually be in the bylaw itself since the rules and regulations can be adopted uh, pretty much on an annual basis by the by the stormwater management uh, authority which in this case by the way would be the selectman now now the reason for that change is the selectman will defer to their agents i.e. Conservation Commission or Planning Board or potentially even Zoning Board of Appeals for some a small subset of special permits. Uh, that would leave the Stormwater Management Authority as a potential. So does that not require, would that not require two filings, right? Or how would that work? If, if, the, if it's a, technically a Board of Selectmen matter, wouldn't you have to? So, so the filing would be with the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen would authorized as the agents acting under the stormwater management authority as assigned by the board of selectmen to be the ones that have the hearings that would leave the board of selectmen under state law and, and case law as a quote independent authority who could then act on uh, appeals to the issuance of this to the stormwater management permits effectively the way that the current law is written the the selectmen would not issue any permits directly they would be issued by the underlying agents Signed by the Board of Selectmen, which would give the Board of Selectmen an independent, uh, we believe, based on town council advice, an independent role so that they could become the initial appeal authority. Now, part of the rationale behind that is we want to avoid a situation where we grant a stormwater management permit and the only legal appeal to that is to the courts. Because we know right now that any appeal to the courts takes multiple years, typically more than two and less than three before the first formal hearing even gets held right now. We, we really want to avoid that situation for applicants before us because of the chilling effect that has on land use development. Uh, the expectation, when I say expectation, is that the Board of Selectmen would uphold whatever stormwater management permit it issued by the agents and potentially would still end up in the in the courts after that but it would at least give an option to the applicant where if they felt they were treated in, in an egregious fashion to go to the board of selectmen and make their case so you're talking about I said before we had discussed the idea that stormwater management would be an integral part of whatever decision was rendered by whatever the conservation commission or the planning board so now you seem to be talking as though there would be a snow no. Yes. Yes and no. That's correct so far. Okay. But but town council has advised us that the stormwater management component of that could still be based on the way this is currently drafted, except for the, the wording in 60. <laughs> that 
the, the Board of Selectmen could still, acting as an appeal authority, remand that back to the board with some instructions as to wit why they feel that the stormwater management component of that needs to be fixed without them having to go to court. So is it the expectation that, you know, as we talked in the Constitution <coughs> Commission, thought we were basically saying you're going to have one, one document in which now we, we're talking basically we're going to have a separate stormwater permit, stormwater management it, permit. It, that's won't, be be, it won't be a separate it, document. It'll be incorporated. So it's the whole decision? It will be incorporated as an item in the approval language from the planning board in our behalf. Uh, we would probably still have the same requirement that we have now, which is that paragraph in our approvals that says if if conservation requires a, a modification under their their requirements under the Wetlands Protection Act that we would discuss with conservation how we can mutually agree on what we need to do with that. So it would still basically be done the same way. And, and again, the intent is to, while the requirements might be slightly more rigorous under the new stormwater management bylaw than they are under uh, subdivision control and special permits, which, which I don't believe is the case. Uh, subdivision control law and our special permit requirements have always required that they meet the no net runoff and, and, and meet the requirements that the uh, MS4 and, and the Massachusetts stormwater guidance has given us since uh, I believe it's close to 20 years now. We've already, we already meet those requirements. But again, in theory, you're doing, you're doing one public hearing, you're doing everything yes. still meshed into one, you're not requiring anything. That's else. correct. Okay. No, no second notices, no, no additional public hearing with their own timelines and, and so on and so forth. The only case where that would actually happen, uh, we believe from, from the discussions we've had in, in our informal uh, get-togethers on Wednesdays with, the, with our track meeting, would be those cases where there's a large section of land that's going to be worked on in some way that didn't fall under subdivision control or a special permit. I, someone wants to clear a whole bunch of land to get ready to do something, but they're not actually going to file a formal permit. They would then have to file for a formal stormwater permit standalone, if you will. So that's the updates right now. So I, I am going to, I'll send a copy of that around, which I just received today. Uh, or it would have been sent around to everybody earlier. <laughs> with a note that, that I would ask the board to look at section 6D. It's a single paragraph. Uh, and as of right now, in the, in the mocked up version, it just has shall crossed out with the word may added. It still has uh, time dates for a bunch of things. And again, none of those time dates match up with any of the legal requirements for, for the three different public hearing processes the boards would act under, i.e. wetlands protection, subdivision control, or special permit site plan approvals. Okay? And we can get, we don't, we don't act, actively have to make a recommendation on this until our next meeting, but we'd like to get some language back to the, back to our track committee so that we can discuss revising that so that we come up with a final version of the wording prior to going to town meeting. We prefer not to be revising the language of what's printed in the warrant on the fly at town meeting. Okay? Given that, I think we've covered everything on the agenda. Dodd, is there anything that we didn't? 94 West Street? No, that's not on the agenda. Oh, well, he was asking on the agenda. Yes. Okay. All right, so, so, so there is another, and I almost forgot that. But <laughs> So on West Street, there's a building that, that for many, many years, uh, and it had been issued a special permit a lot of years ago and was operating as a, a beauty salon for a long time. Sometime in the past two or three years, uh, the beauty salon left that site in a business by the name of uh, DNL Appliance uh, has moved into that site. Uh, DNL uh, Appliance recently got a a special permit, which which I think more technically should be considered the modified special permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals, to so add a significant amount of space to their building i.e. an expansion. That expansion is uh, under our zoning bylaw is, is within the note of a 50% expansion of the existing building in a 
and a non-conforming grandfathered use, if you will. Uh, it does significantly change the use from a uh, beauty salon, which had its own parking requirements now, to a, uh, a retail shop, a very specialty retail shop, if you will. They, they basically just sell appliances there. I don't mean to demean the product that they sell, but they've always been known to me and, and to, I think to most people in town as a scratch and dent appliance appliance location. I think the majority, they, they sell both some used appliances, but the majority of the appliances they sell are actually new appliances, uh, which come from a variety of different locations, but, but they all fall into what, what I term and I think what we all understand is the, the scratch and dent category. I actually bought one of those appliances from a, a full retail appliance operator that had one on the floor that had get damaged. Uh, and I think we all understand the value of doing that in terms of the financial impact, but in, in any case, I, I just did note that from the special permit that's been issued by the Zoning Board of Appeals, since this was a, uh, a grandfathered non-conforming use, it is their authority to issue the special permit that uh, it will dramatically reduce the parking on the site as the, the new buildings uh, basically go into areas that are now clearly paved and lined as parking spaces. My only concern is that, that we work carefully with the building commissioner in the future as well as the Zoning Board of Appeals to, to make sure that when a use changes on a site that it's made clear to the applicant as part of whatever the finding is, whether it be made by the planning board uh, the Zoning Commissioner and uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals that uh, a significant reduction in parking spaces means that it, it's probably impossible to sometime down the road in the future to go back to a beauty salon at that location as the square fo footage of the building will increase by some 40 plus percent and, and the parking that was required when it was a beauty salon is, is dramatically uh, less now with those, that added building there. Uh, I did note in the special permit issued by the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, well, I think the, the permit is fairly well written. Uh, there's no direct mention to the fact that it, it, let's say, constrains the potential future use of that site, given the, the addition of the buildings and, and the reduction of, of the parking that, that that resulted in. So as, as you all know, we've, we've had ongoing discussions with the, the building commissioner uh, as to the impact of, of buildings that are built with under a special permit for, for whatever the use is, but where that use has a very minimal requirement for parking. And then even as the buildings are being built or before they're even being built, the, the use of those buildings has changed, which dramatically changes the everything from the parking requirements to the traffic flow impact and all of that. So uh, I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. Uh, at this point in time, we as a board don't have anything before us in terms of, uh, of things that need to be done for that site. But uh, if any member of the board would wishes to offer some, uh, and I'd ask that the, that that permit be, be emailed out to all of the members of the board so they have a chance to look at it. Maybe even a copy of the previous permit that was there for the uh, the beauty salon at the site. The recent special permit? The recent one. I think that was sent out to all it the board was. members already. Okay, Not the did. old one. I'd like if, if we could to send a copy of the old one as well. Mm -hmm. Other than the fact that the, the parking changed fairly dramatically, uh, which potentially in the future would constrain the use of that site. We we want to we want to be careful with that and make sure that the applicants are aware of what constraints they're going to fall under when they do something like that. I'm not I'm not sure that that's covered very well in in the, in the permit. That's going to be especially true when there's a real estate trust or a, some kind of of corporate entity that owns the property. That, that has a, a either a renter or a lease or whatever using the property. But once that property use is changed and, and it changes the parking, then then potentially that under our zoning bylaw that, that greatly minimizes what can potentially be there in the future. 
the hair salon special permit was that planning board or zoning board? I think that was also zoning board because I think it was in a I'll, district. I'll research it, but yeah, I, I think it was zoning board. Originally, it was a small retail building with three units. Mm. I think that special permit may well have been the planning board when they converted the entire building to a, a beauty salon. I believe that was a second special permit issued by the Zoning Board of Appeals, but that goes back quite a ways now. Long time. Yeah. My memory doesn't quite go back that far anymore. I do remember there was a special permit issued for retail business, which could have, which would have allowed the building to be divided up into three units. And I know at one point there was at least two retail businesses running out of that prior to the to the beauty salon. Okay, we'll research, see what we get, and we'll send okay. it. The two so exhibits to the um, to the um, email that was sent around didn't didn't just the decisions there, so you don't have a copy of the plan or the um, elevation. Do we have a copy of there that? Is, there is a plan. Oh. Okay. I don't think I have it. I think the plan wasn't was included in the email today. If I okay, yeah. I didn't see it in the. Well, other than the loss of parking, is there anything else that we should be looking at? I I think my my only comment was that all of the permits we do, as well as is the suggestion, would be the permits the zoning board of appeals do. Mm -hmm. We should pay close close attention that when we're changing a use like that and and allowing more building to cover that that site simply has minimum available space there's wetlands issues there's a septic system that has to be near the near the near the street because of the requirements in the, in the wetlands areas and so on and so forth that it, it dramatically changes the available parking at the site i see and, and in my opinion it's important that we make sure that the applicant because in some cases the applicant is a real estate trust or some llc or one of those other multiple entities that owns businesses today. It's in your book. Some kind of corporate in incorporation yeah. or whatever. Oh, yeah. no, it's not. Never mind. So when they, when they come forward and, and ask for something like that, they should be made aware officially that once they do that and that building gets built and, 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 and removes existing parking, that if you look at the table of parking requirements for ver multiple various retail uses, that, that that crosses off some of the things that could be done there. I see. And we just need to, I think it's our duty to make sure that the applicant before us knows that mm -hmm. so he can make a decision whether he wants to continue with, with the additions. Uh, I mean, it's very possible that the corporate entity that applied for that special permit from ZBA is, in fact, the same principle as, as DNL appliance. I don't know that. Mm -hmm. Those things get a little tricky to track when you're trying, because when you go to the registry of deeds, typically it doesn't say who the principals in the LLC are. You then have to go to a different state website and try and track that down. And for better or for worse, the state doesn't do an awful good job of keeping those records up to date. We've seen that multiple times in the past. But it should be it should be on on the board's in town responsibility to make sure that the applicant understands that. Okay. My view is that should be written directly into the permit so that they're put on notice that you know, there's a potential issue there in the future if you were to try and come back and say, I want to go back to a beauty salon or a hair salon. I don't know what the correct term for those are these days, but <laughs> whatever, whatever that is. Excuse me, Roy. Yes. There are also two memos, one from the deputy fire chief and one from the um, health agent. I put on everybody's desk. So is the one that it's marked 494 West Street? That's that's uh, from Quake, Craig Winter, who's the safety officer, also the deputy fire chief, safety officer of the right. fire department.
Yeah, so I do think that's correct. I think based on, on the presentation that was made that that I heard bits and pieces of to the Zoning Board of Appeals is is that most of the additional spaces for warehouse to store store materials, i.e. appliances, I would guess from, from the, since my quick view when I went through there the other day is that's all they do is they sell appliances. I'm sorry. Feel free to step up to the table, Charlie. I'm sorry to interrupt. Okay. Go ahead. Um, my name is Charlie Woodward. I work for Professional Land Survey Associates, and I actually represent DNL uh, Appliance. So I can answer a lot of the questions that you brought. Thank okay. you very much. Charlie, while you're right by the mic, could, could you give your, your identification information quickly? Oh, sure, I'd be glad to. My name is Charlie Woodward. I work for Professional Land Survey Associates, and I'm here representing DNL Appliance uh, at 494 West Street in East Bridgewater. Uh, so, if there so are any particular questions, I'd be glad to try to answer them. So, is 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 DNL actually the owner of that property? Yes, sir. It, he is, yeah. and there is actually a note on the plan. Uh, it's called uh, F and K Nominee Trust. Yes. And F and K is his son and his daughter, Frank and Kate. Okay. So that answers one of the questions is that, that wasn't totally clear from from looking at the documentation. So I did note there was a nominee trust that owned it, yeah. and it was it was a DBA, uh, DNL appliance. Yeah, David so, and Linda Tolanoli. Okay. So so the other the other comment, and I think you understand where that comment is coming from. That it's extremely important that applicants understand when they make a change like this, mm -hmm. and take away some of the parking <coughs> that that changes the list. Of, within the zoning bylaw, there's requirements for parking. The things that they can no longer meet now get crossed off. Of course. And so, uh, we have gone over that with them in detail. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, the addition, uh, he is now, has always done business up the street at the old Iris Smiths yes. on the other side of uh, in West Bridgewater. Yep. And what he'd like to do is move the things he has stored up there down here. So those, uh, that addition, will be in fact for storage, okay? okay? And we are, there is a note also on the plan in the lower left-hand corner. Uh, right now we have, I believe it's 14 parking spaces and we're going to be losing six of them, okay, with the building. But uh, the original building when he bought it three years ago was in fact three businesses. It was a salon, it was a nail shop, and it was a tanning salon, okay? So there were actually three businesses within that, which, as you can imagine, have much more traffic than David has. Yeah. No, no question. That in certain times, those times when my wife and other people, because my wife used to go there, oh, uh, it was an extremely busy place with all the Plus. parking spaces full and so on and so forth. But okay, yes, sir. Okay. All right. So that that's all I had, and and, and, and this wasn't necessarily to pick on this site, but no. This I has become an ongoing issue that we want to we want to try and better address at the time permits are being issued, and make sure that when any applicant comes before us and an engineering firm does plans for them, it, it's incumbent upon them to understand that if they put up a building that requires minimal parking, and then before the building is even finished, come back and say, "Now I want to make that something else," that based on the amount of land you use, the available space for parking and things like that, you may not be able to use it for something else. Uh, we also, uh, I believe you also, I, I talked to uh, the Board of Health Officer today uh, in detail. I think you also got a, uh, an email from her, okay, Jean Marie. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of our major concerns on this particular site also, okay, is the limitations of the septic system. Okay, so that's something else. Uh, we've been working with this client about <coughs> a year and a half, two years, you know, a step at a time. We didn't want to just you know, go full blast and spend all their money and end up with a denial because we had so many boards to go through. So uh, does, does what <clears throat> does what you've designed take into account what the Board of Health agent has referenced in the email? Yes, okay, and verbally we've gone over more today, and I assured her today, I've known her from before, okay, uh, she's been in the business for many, many years, as have I, okay, and uh, I, can't, I assured her that nothing would happen on that site until the Board of Health was 100% satisfied with everything that's supposed to be done. So, which goes without saying anyway, we're not gonna get permits 
without the approval of all the, the boards. In terms of, um, of building design, are we looking at something that's consistent with what's there now? In uh, the building that's going to be going up, they're designing it now. It's basically a metal building, okay? So it's two stories. Uh, it will be the same color as the building that's there now, but uh, it, it's you know it's a it's a warehouse type of building. So is the second story used for a warehouse as well? You said it's yes, two yes, ma'am. There is, and I explained that to him before we went to the Board of Appeals. The, the Board of Appeals is very suspect of second floors, okay, that could possibly be turned into apartments at a later time. So I explained that to him that, uh, you know, you're going to have to go through it with the building inspector. He's going to have to be comfortable that it's a mezzanine for storage of appliances, okay? He also sells smaller appliances, uh, microwaves, uh, wash machines, uh, you know, dishwashers, so everything is in a 10-foot, you know, three-door refrigerator, mm -hmm. although he sells those too. Mm -hmm. But uh, he sells a lot to contractors, okay? People, believe it or not, but people that build houses uh, also use these type of appliances, you know? Uh, and he sells a lot of new things too, okay? So he sells a lot with, uh, does a lot of work with contractors, uh, does a lot of work with, uh, apartment owners, things such as that. Uh, he doesn't do a lot of off-the-street business, although he does do a, a percentage of that. So so you're, you've got a nice Cape Cod-style building, I guess I'd say, with a nice pitched roof uh, and so forth, and you're going to add on a metal warehouse building to that? Well, it's from what I understand, it's going to be a metal building, okay? okay. And it's going to be a, a building used to store his appliances. Which will look like what? Uh, which will look like a metal building, I, th <laughs> you know? I mean, uh, do I think it's going to be as, as uh, stylish as the building that's there? I, I honestly don't, okay? But he is, you know, he, he's putting trim on it uh, from, the, from the pictures that I've seen. Uh, he's putting trim on it. It's going to be the same color as that building. And we've got it placed in such a way that we're trying not to, uh, we're trying to match the roof lines and things such as that, okay? And I've actually drawn sketches, again, uh, for the design firm who's going to be doing the building. I guess my, my view of it is I'm probably less concerned with the location of the building uh, and, and that type of, of, of dynamic than I am with the appearance of the building so I would look for a some form of a rendering before I mean I think that's part of or should I, I think it is now part Roy is it not of our of our review process here on a site plan yeah it's it's still I have to touch base with the, uh, the building commission as well because I'm not sure where he feels this fits since the special permit was issued by the zoning board of appeals it wasn't clear whether or not he expects to see a, a second site plan approval diagram or not or whether under his view of, of the special permit as issued by the Zoning Board of Appeals is That's all, all that they need. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we did, in fact, submit those to the Board of Appeals. Yeah, the, it says that the there was a front process. elevation plan that was submitted. Did we get a copy of that? That would be in the, the Zoning Board file. In the yeah. in, uh, through, I'm sorry, through the Board of Appeals filing, we did submit uh, front side and rear elevation plans. And, and actually a color rendering of what the building would look like on the site. And we also uh, obtained conservation approval to construct the building in, uh, in the area that shows on the plan, the proposed area. So, Mr. Chairman, I would um, like a little bit more information if there is indeed to be a site plan approval here. So my suggestion would be that we continue this to the next meeting at 7.45 p.m. to determine, A, whether there is to be a site plan review. If not, we're good. If there is, then I'd like to see those renderings and have some you know, further discussion potentially. 
Okay, so why don't we reserve some time at our next meeting to have a, a general discussion on this? Uh, I'll be in the office for a while tomorrow, and I'll, I will I will check with the building commissioner to, to see what he feels needs to be done in addition, if anything, in addition to uh, what's already been done. Anybody, anybody else have anything for tonight? No, got it. We got way. anything else left for tonight? No, not, not agenda-wise. Okay. All right. So I guess uh, at this point in time, we entertain a motion to adjourn. That'll be me. <laughs> so that's a, a motion, Lala. Do we have a second? Motion, Lala. Second, Ken, to adjourn. Uh, my computer decided to go asleep, but uh, my watch is two minutes fast, so we'll call it. Uh, a motion to adjourn is on the table at 810. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed? And we'll show that as an unanimous vote of uh, all members present and voting, and we're adjourned at 810 p.m. Thank you all. <laughs>